and this is the launch of the CD about Fallujah. Uh, the CD is, has been produced by Tadamun, uh, Iraqi Women's Solidarity, and we've been working on it for almost two years. The CD is here, and uh, we're going, we are uh, UN, myself, and Zainab, uh, we worked on the production in addition to the other members of Tadamun. Hey, do you want candy? I don't have any candy. You want hand grenade? <laughs> so why Fallujah? Fallujah to many Iraqis is as symbolic as Guernica is to the Spanish. It captured the essence of both um, occupation and resistance. Can't hear. Okay. It suffered a criminal um, and appalling crime against the civilian population. And just like Guernica, Fallujah has come to symbolize um, the most vile um, acts of wanton um, destruction. White phosphorus, napalm, and depleted uranium. Um, the city of mosques was reduced to rubble and with thousands of casualties. The surviving population today are still suffering nine years later. They have very poor health. They suffer from cancers, from leukemias and, and birth defects. There's, there's been no help on offer, uh, no compensation, and no justice. This is our way of documenting this story, the story that was triggered on um, April 2004 by a protest outside a primary school that was occupied by American soldiers. Um, the people of Fallujah wanted the school back and what, what, the events that followed ended in a bloodshed. Documenting the crime, we think, is important. It's important for us, and it's important for the generations um, to come. Um, we don't want this crime to happen again. Documenting the resistance of this heroic city against the most sophisticated, highly equipped army in the world, it's something we, ha we must document. We, it, it's essential. Often, great resistance is remembered in song, and we wanted to remember this heroic city in song, poetry, and music. This CD also represents an act of solidarity, because many of the people that participated are not even Iraqis. But without their help, without their support, this project would not have happened. Um, the CD itself starts, we wanted the CD to start with voices of small children because the, start, the children are the heart of this conflict and the trigger was a primary school. And when we started researching this project, um, we were looking for footage of uh, Iraqi children and we found a mine of information on the internet, mostly recorded by um, occupation forces. Um, so the clips you find at the beginning of the CD are actually recorded by um, American soldiers either watching the children play from their watchtowers um, overlooking a school or just a daily interaction with kids. Um, and I think one of the clips that really um, you know, had an impact on me is when an American soldier is offering a child sweets and he's saying, do you want candy? I don't have candy. Do you want a hand grenade? and the child runs away, frightened. So the child knew what hand grenade meant. And when I was this child's age, I didn't know what a hand grenade meant. My child now does not know what a hand grenade is at the age of seven. So this is the, the sort of thing that makes you think, well, what kind of generation um, this war, what kind of damage that has been um, done against these children, and what kind of adults they are going to grow up to be. Um, the, we also ended the CD with this voices of small children because we wanted to give this kind of hope. We need hope for the future and the children are our future. Um, 
And in between, there is um, a collect the story is told um, in, in, uh, using poetry in both Arabic and English. <laughs> بشبابها وشيبها بصغارها وكبرائها معظمة لدماء الشهداء تحتفل هذا اليوم مدينة فلوجة بحلتها القشيبة التي غسلت عار الاحتلال بدماء أبنائها وشبابها مدينة الفلوجة التي أقضت مضاجع الأمريكان وقفة مشرفة كما وقفنا ضد احتلال العراق دفاعا عن أرض العراق سوف ندافع عن وحدة العراق بدمائنا وأموالنا there was already a very strong idea of what and how to, to present that story. As an editor, everything is about uh, telling a story. So, and this story is a story that um, needed to be told, needs to be told, and uh, was just uh, a very powerful and uh, a serious story. It was very uh, educational for me to learn how, how stories are told in Iraq through music and through uh, uh, passing on those stories, whether they're from a long time ago or whether they're the stories of what happened in Fallujah and how they are passed on through uh, areas and generations through the music. And um, I found that very inspirational and um, for working on something which was, which, as the, the pictures show, was, was quite serious and, 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 and quite upsetting. Actually, the way that the story was told with the use of the music was very inspirational. How to distinguish between the civilians that remain and, and the insurgents? And Given all the advanced warning we've seen of this battle, why would the insurgents have remained? Who would have remained? As far as the civilians are concerned, my impression is that most, in fact, have left. But once we go in there, we have to be very careful not to hesitate. Uh, th this is not the time to be too careful because the opportunity for unnecessary casualties on our side, as Admiral Turner has pointed out, I think is substantial. When war spread through the former Yugoslavia, a practice run for the wars to come, but that's another matter. I was in Bosnia as an aid worker. I was then first director of the Pavarotti Music Center, built in a destroyed school in the destroyed town of Mostar, and we set about using music to help rebuild the lives of young people of that town and the surrounding area. Why did we do it? In 1993, I was in cellars in Sarajevo and Mostar. Shells were exploding, snipers were at work, but people, particularly young people, gathered together, and if they could not listen to music, as there was often no power, they played it. The louder the shelling, the louder their music. It was an expression of defiance, a testament to the survival of the one thing that kept them human in an inhuman situation, the primal language of rhythm and music which connected them to their essence. A friend of mine was a young soldier and he would visit me after his time on the front, a Kalashnikov on one shoulder and a guitar on the other. He would tap the guitar and told me a much better weapon. Together with other soldiers, this young man faced his former classmates across a narrow street playing music to them when it was too dark to fight. Cigarettes were thrown into the building as he performed for his enemies. Just before the war ended in 95, I helped smuggle into Mostar a photo exhibition of Bob Marley, which was sponsored by Island Records. For this exhibition, we took in Marley tapes and CDs, which the local radio station, which was called War Radio, broadcast non-stop for two days from their cellar. The exhibition opened underground on the front line, I will never forget how the town pulsed to Marley's rhythms while the shells rained down. These are examples of easily recognizable influences of music in extreme situations. Music as defiance with an external enemy. But what of the influence of music on the enemy within? It can have a profound effect on the disturbed and traumatized minds of those who've been too close to the barbarism of war, who have shot and killed, have been shot at and wounded, physically and emotionally, who've seen friends die, lost mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters. We sound, found some of the answers at the music center, which allowed the healing power of music to enter a war-traumatized community. 
The young were particularly affected by the war, and from the day it opened its doors, they flooded in. Some of them used music to escape their darkest memories. They would tell me that only when they played or listened to music were they able to escape their nightmares. Children and young people were brought together to make and listen to music, to sing, to beat drums, to strum guitars, to communicate. For the very young, we ran workshops with percussion instruments. I remember attending one of these workshops. One woman sat with her six-year-old daughter who'd been blinded in a mortar attack. She was immobile and impassive. I watched while one of the teachers attempted to get the girl to play a triangle. The girl refused to hold it. This went on for some time until finally she grabbed the triangle with one hand, the metal stick with the other, struck it over and over again, her face lighting up. Her mother told me this was the first time she'd seen her smile. We worked in schools, in towns and villages. Our first project was called The Oceans. We went to the schools and took with us music from the banks of the Naretva, which flows through the centre of the town of Mostar. We took Croat, Serb and Bosniak songs. On their next visit, the theme became the Mediterranean because the Naretva flows into that sea. We brought Tunisian and Maghreb love songs, flamenco, Turkish, French, Italian and Greek music. Then the Atlantic, because that is the ocean into which the Mediterranean flows. Everything from Brazilian to blues, Celtic, West African music, then the Indian Ocean and finally the Pacific. The children became aware that in, they did not just live in a small ethnic, ethnically cleansed ghetto in Mostar, but their town and river had links to the distant islands of the Pacific. For some in Bosnia-Herzegovina, much that happened at the center was dangerously political because music was being used to counter cultural exclusiveness, what I call cultural incest. The most negative and threatening music comes from this traditional, national anthems and military songs. The best music, as with the best art, architecture, and whatever else expresses human creativity, comes from cultural mixing. Goebbels once said, when I hear the word culture, I reach for my gun. I would answer, and I think they've answered in this film brilliantly, when I heard the word gun, I reach for my culture. The Marines are taking Fallujah one house and one street at a time. So in, in the CD we, we have poetry, we have songs, and I've been working for, I mean in the last 10 years on songs of resistance. And we chose three or four of the songs which represent uh, the resistance in Iraq in general, and in particular, about it is about the resistance of people of Fallujah. Uh, if you listen to it, like the uh, a short couple of seconds of the song here, Hayallah lil Fallujah, God salute the heroic people of Fallujah. Uh, it combines, uh, to the people who are interested in music, it combines two uh, strands of Iraqi music. One is an ancient form, art form, called maqam. And the second, the chanting, al manqab al which is chanting in a praise of the prophet. So it's both the secular and the religious chanting. And this something which we are so used to hear from our childhood to this kind of music. So when it became part of the resistance, it's already like we have, we are absolutely willing to receive deep inside ourselves to these. So people are, without even knowing the words, they can really uh, repeat uh, the tones or the, it's familiar. And what is familiar since childhood is there. It's you grow up with it and you never forget. Thank you very much. Thank you.